I'd like to welcome to the front here, Brian Imus and Katie Kaluzny from the Illinois Green Alliance. We'll be speaking on some policy trends and new things that are going on in our city. Uh, Brian's the executive director of Illinois Green, where he's been involved in numerous initiatives, codes, ordinances, including the most recent stretch code for the city, uh, the Building Performance Standard, and the Building Energy Resource Hub. And as deputy director of Illinois uh, Green Alliance, Katie directs and implements education programming, fosters organizational partnerships and collaborations, works with staff on all their program goals, and oversees day-to-day -day activities of the organization. This is not their first rodeo. This is their sixth rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we want to thank them, of course, for their contributions and uh, yeah, take it away. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, David. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Brian Imus. I'm the executive director with Illinois Green Alliance. Uh, love being here every single year, not just for the donuts and the Smarties, um, but it's a great crowd and a great opportunity um, for Katie and I to both share a little bit more about what's happening with building decarbonization policy and uh, the really important role that building professionals, you all have in making sure that whatever policy gets passed, it makes sense and it's implemented well. Um, so that's really the takeaways that I want you all to have um, from the presentation today. So I know many of you are familiar with Illinois Green Alliance, but just really briefly, um, it's. It's a nonprofit mission-based organization, but really serves as uh, the space for building professionals in Illinois to collaborate, to share, and to do what it takes to um, grow the demand for high-performance buildings um, in Illinois. The, um, the work around all of that and how we make all of that happen um, is really through three things, a lot of professional education, a lot of community engagement projects that leverage the expertise and the passion of our members, like the Illinois Green Schools Project. And then of course, a lot of uh, policy, building decarbonization policy, so we can actually scale those technologies and design best practices that we know work and that make sense and that are affordable and feasible. Um, but again, it's all about the, leveraging that network of building professionals who are really passionate about green building. Um, I've been working with Illinois Green for 11 years and the momentum for green building, for building decarbonization for all electric buildings is off the charts. The way I think of it is like never before, the wind is at our backs. And the biggest reason for that is a lot of the policy that's happening at the state, federal and local levels. I think a great example of what's happened, just look at what the city of Chicago has done over the last couple of years. Um, they've updated their energy code. They've set really ambitious climate goals. Uh, they have introduced and made a, com a commitment for a building performance standard. You're seeing also at the state level, uh, laws already passed and on the books like the uh, like CJA and uh, uh, at the federal level, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. In a few days, we'll be celebrating the three-year anniversary of the passage of the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act. There's a lot of numbers up here. Don't worry about it. I think what I want you to take away from here is that what's exciting is that this is a nation-leading climate policy that other states are already looking to, um, to either make happen in their states and learn from our experience around implementation. Very simply, this 900-page law is focused around making sure that we get to a place where the entire electric grid is carbon free by 2045. Great to set a goal, but there's actual money that's already allocated that's focused on making sure that that's happening. There are interim targets along the way that the state has to follow, um, and there's a number of different programs to make that happen. One thing that I think is really relevant to building professionals, uh, $82 million a, every single year uh, is invested in workforce development and contractor equity programs. As I said, it's 900 pages. There's a lot of elements to it. One thing that's particularly exciting is the stretch energy code. Uh, this is a great example where building professionals had a really important role to play. The law said that the state had to create a stretch energy code for municipalities to adopt. Uh, 
We worked with a number of other allies to get Illinois Green members, building professionals, appointed to the uh, advisory council that helped to write that stretch code. And just a couple of days, it passed that final hurdle. Starting on January 1, municipalities in Illinois can now adopt the stretch energy code that goes above and beyond the base energy code in, uh, in municipalities around the state. So this is a really big deal and have a huge impact. The uh, CJA, it also positions Illinois to get more than its fair share of the funding that's coming from the federal level um, from a number of different policies like the Inflation Reduction Act. This summer, for example, the state just received a um, $430 million grant uh, from the US EPA focused on helping the state achieve its climate goals. 172 million of that is focused on programs around clean buildings. There's a lot of elements to it. What's really important for all of us to recognize, they have the money. Now the state's uh, Illinois EPA has to figure out how these programs are crafted, uh, written, and how it actually impacts the, the building industry here in Illinois another huge important role for building professionals to play in exactly how those, those dollars and those programs are gonna be developed. The other place where there's a lot of funding being driven by this climate policy and building decarbonization policy, the Illinois Finance Authority, uh, they are the agency in the state that has a lot of money for a lot of different types of programs around clean energy and building decarbonization. Their goal is all about how do we provide not just grants, but also develop innovative financing programs and uh, loans that helps to attract and leverage more private capital towards decarbonization projects in the state. CJA created a climate bank that's uh, part of the Illinois Finance Authority, and this the fact that this exists is allowing the state to leverage even more Inflation Reduction Act dollars to go through the Climate Bank. Um, so right now, the Illinois Finance Authority and the Climate Bank, they're working really hard to figure out how these programs are going to work and how, how uh, folks in the private sector can start tapping into these dollars and take advantage of these programs. So what I just shared... Those are, our, those are policies, building decarbonization is already on the books. There's a lot more to come. Uh, so Clean and Healthy uh, Buildings Act is being developed right now, and we expect it to be introduced in Springfield for lawmakers to consider uh, early next year. The idea is that this is essentially a CJA 2.0, where the first CJA was focused around decarbonizing the grid. What are we going to do about buildings and gas? Um, so that we can meet our climate goals. Uh, there's also the Illinois Commerce Commission. They regulate all the utilities here. Um, they've actually created a whole process where they want stakeholders like building professionals to weigh in on what the future of gas actually looks like before we start deciding how to charge ratepayers to manage the infrastructure that exists. And then there's a ton of stuff that's happening at the local level. Most recently, one that I'm really excited about, uh, Evanston just received a federal grant in $10 million to develop a building uh, performance standard for the city, that policy will drive a lot of uh, investment in the retrofits of existing buildings in, in Evanston. So there's two things that keep me up at night. Uh, one, uh, with all of the new opportunity to develop new decarbonization policy, I get nervous that lawmakers are out there making policies that don't necessarily align with best practices in the industry. That's where building professionals need to weigh in. And Illinois Green, through a lot of our programs and our work as a nonprofit organization, leveraging you all as our members, are finding ways to match your expertise, your experience, to educate policymakers about how buildings actually operate, how buildings actually get built. Uh, and so these are some photos of some examples. We brought a number of our members to meet with Mayor Johnson right before he introduced um, a big decarbonization policy. Uh, we've done building tours that allow local elected officials to actually see what an 
all electric bungalow looks like and how it happened and how it creates jobs and who are the professionals that make things like that happen? What are the products that go into making that happen? Um, so that's one thing that I think is really important that needs to happen to be successful. The other is how do we make sure as we're implementing all of these new policies, as we're thinking about all, how all that money gets spent, um, we need to make sure that that goes really well. And that's, again, where building professionals need to get involved. Illinois Green is doing a lot of work as well to develop the tools and resources and programs um, to make sure that the implementation of these policies go well. And that's where I'd like to invite my colleague, Katie Kaluzny, to come and tell you a little bit more. Thank you, Brian. And thank you. You only took 10 minutes exactly. Um, good job. That means I have time to talk. So um, thank you guys for having me for my sixth rodeo. I'm excited to be here. And as Brian mentioned, um, you know, we need to show that these um, buildings and these examples are happening. Um, we need to teach others that, um, that have already drank the green Kool-Aid to keep drinking more of it and teach others about it. So we have a couple of um, things that we've been doing. One is our high performance building tour series. Um, so how are we teaching others? Um, going to these projects, getting the project teams to come back out and talk about what they've learned, what were their successes, but also what were their challenges? What can, we, can others learn from um, that happened at these projects that that, so that others don't make that same mistake or others can learn from that example. Um, we did, uh, we have um, all sorts of different projects from multifamily, um, new construction, to nature centers, to schools, to commercial buildings. Um, we actually have a tour tomorrow. If you wanted to hang out with us tomorrow at 10 a.m., we're going to the DuPage Wildlife Center. You can actually see an animal, wildlife animal hospital that's net zero, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but also, you know, we just are gonna continue to add to this list. Um, we call it the Road to, net, Road to Zero Building Tour Series, um, and we'll continue to do that. So if you have projects that you'd like to highlight to showcase, we're always looking for more. So if you have something that you want others to be learning from, um, no matter what um, certification that's pursuing and we really want to teach by by showing and being able to connect building professionals with the the project teams the other thing that's new that we're doing this year is doing some deeper dives into some different tools and resources that can be actionable um, on your project. So um, we're doing, we had a 15 minute session at, at a um, summit we did last year called Making the Pitch. So how do you talk to your clients? How do you talk to um, your, even your teammates about getting to net zero? Um, everyone said, I really wish I could hear more of that. So we're like, great, well, let's do a two hour version of that. Um, and so we had people come in, we actually had activities where you could practice making making the pitch and doing some role play with that as well. Um, if you're interested, we also have that recorded and on our website. So you can um, check out that conversation, hear from some great speakers on how to just talk with your project team about um, going to that next level of high performance. Um, we also just dove into some different energy modeling um, programs to see um, how everyone can dabble in energy modeling and, and you know see how that's working more early on in your project um, before you start um, throwing out some specs or ideas or design um, to see how that's working in the real world. Um, and then actually next week, we have a program just to talk about different life cycle analysis tools around embodied carbon. Um, so we're having some folks come in and explain these different tools. Um, you'll be able to practice during the session. Um, this is a virtual training. But really trying to dive into some more things that you can take back, aren't just a panel discussion. We like doing those too, um, but trying to add some workshops that are helping people with their daily practice. Um, we also have our favorite event, which is our um, Getting to Zero Summit, which is coming up in October. Um, we have panels all day um, talking about project implementation, case studies, talking about specific technologies that um, in practice, we have a panel this year that's about how buildings are performing. So the operation side, you know, one, two, three years after getting a net zero certification, how are you maintaining that? How are you keeping it going? And how can others learn from that um, after it's turned over to the operator? Um, so again, trying to get best practices shared here. In addition to that, we are launching um, a very expanded version of our um, getting to zero or state of net zero report. Um, we've been working with a firm called Telesto um, to do a deeper dive study into the state of net zero buildings in Illinois. Um, we're going to be launching that um, at this session as well, and um, we'll have them come and speak about their findings. Um, so again, just trying to make sure, like Brian said, we're trying to move policy forward, but we're also trying to show how it's happening here already um, and how we can all be moving that forward as well. 
Um, just previewing next year, um, we're learning from other people in different places around the country that are having success with programming as well. Um, our friends in Massachusetts host a building tech forum um, every year where um, um, folks that are working on new and innovative technologies can come and speak to a building professional audience. Um, so we're going to host one of those. Um, now I said it out loud, so we're definitely doing it. Um, you've heard me, and so now you can come in March next year. Um, and we're also working, um, collaborating with NREL and um, USGBC to host a 10-week um, Solar Decathlon Pro program, which is a getting to net zero 10-week um, course um, that you can take as a cohort over time. So if you have any professionals in your firm that are interested in taking a deeper dive and learning those skills, um, it's a really cool course, um, and you can take it for like an hour and a half each week instead of taking a whole day. Um, and then our, you know, our normal green women in green building luncheon, where we have thought leadership from women in the industry um, that are pushing the needle. Um, and then we're going to be hopefully working on a decarbonization summit um, again next year in the summer, which we did with a lot of folks from Cyclone um, a couple of years ago. Um, in addition to that, last year when he, we were here at the rodeo, we had just launched um, Illinois Green's new project, the Building Energy Resource Hub. Um, it is now one year old. Um, it's very exciting, but a lot of things have happened in that one year. Um, just want to share some more resources. This is um, our resource and our new project initiative that's kind of bringing everyone else to the table. Um, so we've been talking for a long time about the building professionals that have been building high performance for a while, have already shown interest in that. They're voluntarily building things you know, prior to policy requiring them to do so. Um, this resource is setting up to help um, pass more policy, but also you know, help those along that haven't been following those trends or haven't been following those practices. Um, we were successful in working with um, Elevate, um, the Illinois Finance Authority, and the International Code Council to receive a Department of Energy grant um, to support this work. So we have four years of funding, as well as funding from ComEd and um, the Builders Initiative um, to support our work and grow our team. We're now at nine staff, um, which is the most um, we've ever had. Um, it's been really, really cool to grow and be able to have additional capacity um, to develop these resources and to make um, partnerships happen. Um, all of these folks on the slide are just some of the partners that we're working with. Um, we can only do this through partnerships and through additional funding to move things forward. So working with BOMA, MIA, CDAC, um, AIA Chicago, Slipstream, um, all of these folks to just help us uh, make sure that we're putting out the best resources and, and curating them in one spot that fo folks can get to um, and find their answers that they need. Um, some, of the, some of the things the hub is focused on is guiding building owners and operators on energy efficiency options. And we've heard a lot about that today, and we hear a lot from folks in the, in the field that I just don't know what to do. I'm not sure which path to take. You know, should I get, get a decarbonization consultant? Um, do I start with a comment energy audit? Like, what are the steps, and how do I follow that through? Um, and so this, we're creating some tools and resources as step-by-step -step guides, other opportunities to guide building owners and operators at all different building types and sizes throughout Illinois. Um, increasing contractor knowledge um, to make sure they understand as these policies pass, how are they going to meet the demand for those additional retrofits and jobs coming out. And then the financial resources Brian mentioned, those are getting more and more confusing as, as well as getting more and more exciting. So which, play, which things play well together, which things don't? Um, how do you find the right stack of tools to work with you on your project and the project you're pursuing? So we're working with the Finance Authority and the Climate Bank, as well as another a number of other partners to develop those tools and resources and get them out um, to everyone. Um, and there's some things on the website already. Um, I'm going to share a website link in a minute. Um, but really, we're doing this through education, case studies, um, partnership opportunities. We're going to be launching some one-on-one -on -one technical assistance um, for building owners, um, especially for municipalities that are adopting advanced energy policy. Um, we have a newsletter. Um, some of the education we've put out most recently are a new series called Finance Fridays. Um, so if you want to dig into um, one tool a little bit more um, or learn one thing instead of listening to an hour-long webinar about every finance strategy, um, you can um, plug and play into those Finance Fridays and also find them on our website. Um, but just really trying to demystify these different tools and resources and help you understand what can work best on your projects. Um, and then in 2025, we have a number of cool things coming up. Um, one is we're working on a decarbonization decision tree tool um, with a number of partners um, with the help of Emmy Riley, who is on our advisory board um, for the hub, a cyclone um, energy group. Um, so we're really thankful to have a, an advisory board that has a lot of um, deep knowledge in this subject matter to help guide us on the resources that are going to help move the industry forward the most. 
Um, we're going to build some directories to help find qualified contractors and qualified accountants that know the tax credits, um, know how to help you with that process. Um, stretch code primers, as Brian mentioned, that passed a couple of days ago and will start being implemented next year. Um, how does everyone understand that without reading the entire building code? You know, can we make a two-pager? Can we make a quick um, infographics and, and work with the ICC to help us, um, you know, kind of, again, demystify that for others? And then that energy and financing roadmap. Um, we're really excited to, um, as these tools come out, um, to define how they qualify with your project and, and for you to be able to click and learn a little bit more and then deep dive deeper if you really want to nerd out on that topic. Um, so these are just a few of the things that we're working on, again, to bring the industry forward. Always looking for your advice um, in the industry to help guide us on what additional tools and resources we should build. Um, I have a QR code to take you to all of those cool things if you'd like to check it out, but I'm sure the Cyclone staff are going to share these slides and everything later um, if they want, and you can go check those out as well. Um, but with that, I think we've left exactly 10 minutes for questions. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, do we have any questions for Brian and Katie? Yeah, Amir. 10 minutes. We have 10 whole minutes. Hey, John. Uh, I wanted to ask, has anybody looked into using um, Of opportunities conversation how to do that exactly uh, and um, there are two pilot projects I don't know if they use right of way um, in the way that you're describing, but there are two pilot projects that were uh, written into the state of Illinois' grant um, that they sort of have identified that they'd like to fund to be able to demonstrate the value of geothermal uh, networking systems like that. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you both, uh, Brian, Katie. It was, uh, as always, great presentations. You mentioned collaboration with NREL. I'm just curious about that. What does that look like? What are you guys cooking up there? Um, yeah, one of the cool things about being part of a DOE grant is that you we're part of a um, um, Energy Codes Collaborative across um, a network of everyone else that um, won similar DOE grants around advancing and, um, energy codes and policies. Um, so we are part of different technical advisory groups and connected with all of the folks working on similar work across the country, um, which means more meetings, super fun, um, <laughs> but um, get to meet some other people and um, make sure we're not reinventing the wheel with things that exist out there already. How can we adapt each other's resources to different markets? Um, you know, if someone else is making a... Um, you know, a tool on um, energy audit procurement, then how can we adapt that for the Chicago market? Um, the funding and financing might be more specific to Illinois, um, so that's going to be something that we're going to make. But the NREL piece came up, actually, um, they reached out to us and said, hey, we see you're doing a lot of getting to zero, net zero stuff. We see it all on LinkedIn. Um, did you know we have a 10-week course? Do you want to offer that? And I said, yeah. Sure, is it free? Uh, <laughs> um, so yes, it's it's part of being in that network and being out there more, um, which our additional capacity has has allowed us to be, but then also just being able to take advantage of those opportunities. Well, if I may do a follow-up, since you mentioned other resources, I noticed um, you work with New York City Building Energy Exchange Program to kind of share resources. Do you have plans on doing similar collaborations with other states, it, you know, to a point, not you know, wasting resources, the kind of material that has been developed that can be generic enough as far as workflows or things like that? Yeah, we're actually part of a group called the Building Performance Partnership, um, which is a network of all the other hubs um, that are doing something similar. So we've actually um, kind of um, copied this idea a little bit from where building performance standards or advanced energy codes have happened, you know, at previous, you know, five, 10 years ago in other major cities. So in DC, in New York, um, even St. Louis, they all have um, something, a version of an energy resource hub um, where it's trying to, you know, curate those resources and get them back out by outreaching to new audiences um, throughout the state. And so we have monthly calls where we exchange resources and talk about best practices. We're working on a webinar series together um, where we're all able to share. 
Well, hopefully that, that answer, and that was a great um, tee up for Katie. I'm glad that she got to answer that question. <laughs> uh, but I think that that hopefully gives everyone a sense that like what we're doing in Illinois is pretty bold and exciting, um, but there's a lot happening all over the country. This, this trend around building decarbonization policy um, is happening. Um, it's happening very fast. Um, I do think that what we're doing in Illinois is pretty special because we have a pretty special network um, and history of working around green buildings in the state. Um, so really excited to not only learn from other places, but to show off and help other places around the country learn from our example here. I will mention too really quick that um, we have two extra staff, two additional staff here in the back. So I mentioned we've grown quite a bit. So it doesn't have to be the Katie and Brian show all the time anymore. Um, but we have a, um, a policy associate who's working on all that great policy work um, um, with Brian. Um, Ryan, if you want to wave. Um, and then Kindy Kruler, who's our senior program manager, that's working on all of the hub resources as well. So we've been able to add our team um, to be able to work on more of this, this work. So if you have questions um, afterwards, we have more folks in the audience. Yes. Um, thank you again. I uh, wanted to ask about businesses, um, funding for businesses that want to develop a particular kind of building material, a natural building material, to replace uh, typical insulation. Um, if someone wanted to start, like if I wanted to start a business <laughs> that specialized in this building material, um, who would I contact to start to see what grants might be available or what um, process I might follow uh, to gain funding? Um, you could definitely contact me. I'm happy to um, look into it for you. Um, but also, as Brian mentioned, that um, the Climate Bank is coming up with lots of new loan, um, both financing and grant products um, that are in the works to be coming out. And some of them are to help support small business um, owners on startup and development. Some of them are for contractors to grow their business as well. So there's a lot of new products coming out um, and we'll do Finance Fridays on them as well, but I'm happy to follow up with you directly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Brian, you said in your presentation that you know felt the momentum was in the right direction. Things are moving. Um, this feels different than the benchmarking days. Is there still are there real threats to adoption of things like BPS in Chicago? Or are there is this going to go through easier? Or do we have to have stakeholder <laughs> engagement meetings with people again? <laughs> Yes, we will. It's not going to be easy for sure. I guess it's all relative. We're in a way better place than we ever have been before. I think that with building performance standards, which I think is the gold standard and the policy that we need because it's going to uh, consider what we need to do in existing buildings. Um, we'll never get where we need to be on our climate goals if we don't address existing buildings. Uh, I think that just there's so much momentum there, but there's the, the headwinds, I think, are um, a lot of municipalities don't have, legitimately don't have the staff or the resources they need to effectively um, implement these policies and make them go well. Uh, you don't want to, and I think the energy benchmarking, if you'll remember, there was a lot of concern like, oh my gosh, all these buildings are going to have to do these things they've never done before, and we formed tools and resources to be able to help make that implementation go well. That's part of the goal of the hub. That's part of the case that we're making to policymakers as they consider building performance standards, that there's going to be a resource there. But I still think that the challenge is how do you support municipalities? And to your point, you know, 10 years ago, there was no data. Now there's data. And now there's cool things to do with data. Um, and so uh, you know, you can see where the buildings need the help. Um, you can visualize that and, and be able to target that a little bit more. That's what we're trying to focus on. We know that not every building needs handholding, um, but a lot are going to need handholding to be able to, to make the change that they need to. So we're excited to do that. My brain's still trying to process how you've done all of this with a staff of only nine now. That's still something that rattles around in my head every time you come up here and talk. I have an answer talk. for that. <laughs> Do you sleep? It's our, it's our members. It's this network of professionals out there who are really passionate, and I feel like we're just a conduit to leverage that expertise. So often uh, we get questions or we get asked to speak because we're the, seen as the experts, but um, we're, we're not. Um, it's all you, and so we look for ways to be able to connect when we get those questions, those folks to the right the right member um, in our network. It's all very impressive. Um, maybe one last thought or question, anyone? All right.
Thank you both so much for your contributions. Really love it. Thanks, everyone.